tech, the disruptors as they're being called, that can change uh, the landscape of mining, agriculture, collection of property taxes and a lot more. How can drones do that? How can drones change your life? How has the government uh, attempted to make India a global hub for drones? It came out with a production-linked incentive scheme and the Modi government believes it can attract investments of almost 5,000 crore rupees over the next couple of years and create jobs of nearly 10,000. So I'm going to be in conversation with one of the authors of the uh, PLI scheme as well as the rules for drones uh, that are coming out. I'm being joined by the Joint Secretary from the Union Ministry of Civil Aviation, Amber Dube. Also joining us today is the co-founder and CEO of Idea Forge, which is uh, India's largest drone company. They started taking the risk uh, and being in drones when many of us didn't even know what that was. Gentlemen, welcome to this uh, edition of Startup Central. Uh, Mr. Dube, I'll come to you first. Uh, you all believe the PLI for drones uh, will get, uh, you know, attract 10,000 new jobs, is going to bring investments of 5,000 crore rupees, uh, maybe get uh, domestic and uh, foreign drone companies to set up new manufacturing bases. So I'll, I'll begin with you. I, is the government of India on time? Are we behind schedule and therefore have you had to offer maybe more incentives than you normally would have had to? Yeah, thank you, Nayantara, for having us. Uh, uh, I think uh, your first question was, uh, are we on, on track or are we on time? I would say we are 20 years late. Okay, ideally this should have happened 20 years back. But uh, be that as it may, uh, better uh, uh, well begun is half done and uh, it's time for catch up because some of the other company countries across the world have moved far ahead, including our northern neighbor. And it's time for us to first catch up and then uh, uh, inshallah beat them. Uh, question about uh, is this number good enough? Uh, I would just say we have to keep it in perspective that this 120 crores is almost double. I'll repeat, uh, uh, double of the entire turnover of our entire uh, uh, drone manufacturing uh, sector. Of course, it's a very low base. and uh, But if you look at the other schemes which are on mature sectors, uh, say like 25,000 crores, 30,000 crores, these are small fractions. Okay, uh, uh, This is basically the GST which is collected is given back as cash back uh, to, to promote uh, domestic manufacturing in emerging sectors. But in our case, uh, this 120 crores spread over three years, it's almost double. Uh, and uh, as the base increases, uh, we'll pump more and more money because this is a sector, uh, we need the sector more than the sector needs us. So uh, uh, that's all I can say at the moment. And uh, as they grow further, we'll pump in more and more, uh, more and more money. And that's why another key reason is that uh, we have stopped at three years, uh, primarily because nobody can even imagine in the worst, it's almost like the internet, uh, in the maybe the 70s or 80s or maybe uh, 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 cell phones in the early 2000s, nobody can even imagine the scale at which uh, the drone industry is going to grow. That's why uh, most of the schemes uh, are for five years. We are stopping at three years because no human brain can actually post. It. So we said that we'll take a, a, a mid a mid course correction around uh, after three years, take a feedback, look at the impact, and then maybe make it even better uh, for Ankits uh, of the world. Uh, there's only one Ankit Mehta. We want maybe a thousand more Ankits to come up. Then. Okay, so you, we are 20 years late. The government does realize that, which also is so important, right, just to know that. So you come out with a scheme for the next three years. Ankit, coming to you now. The government wants not just one idea forge. They want thousands of idea forges out there. Uh, with skin in the game, explain to us uh, how good the PLI scheme is or does it fall short? No, I think uh, the scheme is really exceptional, particularly given the contours of the scheme. Uh, in fact, typically the way you look at the uh, scheme is that uh, it talks about uh, incremental revenue. It talks about uh, a percentage, a very small percentage, actually about 5% typically for most of the sectors. And over here, we are talking about a scheme that is only talking about the value addition and is talking about uh, twenty percent of uh, the value addition as a uh, you know uh, you know grant back to the industry. I think it is definitely in the right spirit at the right place. It is actually uh, something that we also did not expect in the industry because that's not how PLI scheme has been seen or looked at in other sectors. Having said that, uh, you know uh, the quantum, like Ambar sir said, uh, it will be adjusted based on the demand and the pace at which the industry scales and grows. And uh, if this is a key driver for getting to a significantly larger, maybe a billion, two billion dollar kind of a revenue in the industry, 
uh, I am sure that uh, the government will support us in the right form uh, at that point in time as well. So I think to begin with, uh, this is a great uh, scheme to dive really deep into and uh, mainly focus on getting more investments in the industry, operationalizing the sector a lot more, as well as making sure that we are able to uh, attract uh, component manufacturers uh, very, very specifically where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, interest is going to be there by us as well, businesses like us who are looking at indigenizing as much as we can of our supply chain to increase the value contribution for the country. Okay, Amber Dubey, you know, one thing we wanted to understand was also where does the government see the use of drones? You know, you, if you go on your Twitter handle, you're talking about everything from mining to property tax collections to uh, essential medicine delivery and healthcare infrastructure development. Uh, you know, and you've said we're 20 years late. Now, realistically, over the next year or two years, where will we see drones really being used? And that's the easiest question to answer <laughs> from a veteran journalist like you. I would say, uh, tell me a sector where it will not be used. Okay, that's the easiest answer. And uh, uh, on, a, on a serious note, uh, our main, main focus is uh, on the remote and the inaccessible areas. We are not too keen at the ministry level on pizza delivery. For that, we have thousands of uh, young Indians uh, ready to deliver in the shortest possible time. Our main focus is in the remote areas. Uh, as you rightly mentioned, agriculture, uh, precision agriculture, uh, spraying, uh, which a, a farmer today puts on that backpack. I mean, it's, it's very emotional. He put on a backpack, he has skin issues, uh, the breathing troubles, eyes uh, get infected. For doing what? Uh, to create food, which you and I will eat uh, probably tonight in, the, in our dinner. So drones can take all that away. And 100 feet away, he'll, he'll spray uh, his son or daughter, or, or he himself will learn. It's such an easy uh, thing to handle. He doesn't need to get an Ankit or an Amber from a big city to come and help him out. So that's just agriculture. Then this precision agriculture, which is like, well, just take a photograph and those through uh, artificial intelligence, they can break the green into millions of hues of green and actually give very specific crop monitoring or a crop yield improvement advice saying, yaha par urea padha dije, yaha par, na, you need a little more NPK or put uh, gober ki khad or whatever, or this pesticide or that pesticide. So just by analyzing the color of the stem, the leaf, the size of the, the seed, uh, size of the flower, I mean, over a period of three or four harvest cycles, uh, as we work uh, between the drone companies, the AI people, and the agricultural experts, we can create magic out there and increase farm incomes by a significant extent at a very, very low cost, because drone technology comes at a very low cost. Yeah. This is just this. And then mining. Uh, I was told that Coal India and a couple of other places, they would actually shut down mining for several days every quarter for doing an audit of the coal stocks or the uh, ore stocks. Today, just by flying a drone in a few hours or maybe a couple of days, you can get a, a very, very accurate uh, volumetric analysis of the coal stacks that are produced. And just 10 days or 15 days in a quarter of extra production, you can imagine what we're talking about. They're just two use cases. I mean, I can just go on and on. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, you know, you're 20 years later, I like the way you're telling me that I'm asking you very simplistic uh, questions, but I'm happy to hear that you at least have a game plan very specifically. But Amber Dubik, now tell us a little bit, and for the layman here and the viewer who's tuning in, and maybe an entrepreneur also who wants to get into drones, whether it is uh, using drones to create magic for precision agriculture or coal mining, the way you were just talking about. Uh, where all do they have to go for approvals? Is it going to have to be the center and the state? Uh, I know there's a new draft policy out there. You're rationalizing rules. You're trying to get rid of a lot of the red tape in the middle. Again, a very, uh, this is not the Nayantara I know. Uh, very simple question. Again, all you have to do is, you know, just like most of the portals, you want to completely make it uh, uh, no, zero human interface. I mean, or maybe reduce it to the lowest possible. There is a digital sky platform, which is already on under the previous rules. And we are going to fix that. As for the new rules, which are just notified on 25th of August, uh, there's a huge amount of work done. In fact, our secretary just uh, held a review uh, with the team uh, about half an hour back. So uh, then our next uh, target is 24th of September, when uh, uh, some of the forms, uh, there are only five forms. So another big thing, uh, our earlier rules, uh, which were there in March, we have repealed that. Uh, I mean, this government is not known for repealing laws, but here uh, we have repealed based on a feedback uh, and our own assessment of the impact of the previous drone rules. 
25 forms which people had to fill up for different activities is now down to just five forms, 25 to five. So that much of red tape is gone. And uh, secondly, uh, uh, we want to move away from this coming to MOCA, the Ministry of Civil Aviation or DGCA. We want you to stay at home, work on your phone, connect to the internet, go to the digital sky platform, fill up whatever data. The forms are also very simplified. Number of fee items used to be 72 earlier, 72 fee items, they're down to just four. And most of those fees are just 100 rupees valid for 10 years. So it's effectively free of cost. Okay, so you come to the uh, uh, digital sky uh, uh, platform and fill it. And, and, and off you go. You just get your self-generated number through the system. And uh, uh, also on 24th September, because uh, we were given only 30 days, we had asked for 90 days, but we were given only 30 days the way this government works. Uh, uh, in th uh, 25th, we launched the, uh, uh, the uh, notified the, uh, the drone rules and we were given 30 days to come up with an airspace map. Now this airspace map is going to revolutionize and I'll just take 10, 30 seconds to explain why. On this map, you see the entire map of India broken down into uh, red and yellow zones. Red zones are the ones uh, which is a no, no drone, uh, no fly zone where you need central government permission. These are like the Rajpati Bhavan or a couple of other places or some sensitive locations, military locations, say Mathura refinery, etc. Yellow zones are the ones uh, where you need air traffic control permission. And anything which is not red or yellow becomes an automatic green, which was default red earlier. Everything was red other unless than the few areas where you take permission. We are making a a complete uh, paradigm shift to a situation where the India's where Indian uh, the India's uh, airspace map will be a default green, where other than the red zones and the yellow zones, uh, everything will be green. So right now we are working with different state uh, police uh, headquarters and uh, various of our central agencies and some 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 other agencies, uh, almost uh, forty plus agencies to map map those red and yellow zones. This is something which takes three months, but we are given thirty days. And with God willing, uh, we will get there on 24th. And on 24th September, you'll actually see the airspace map. So now in the green zones, you need absolutely no permission. So earlier, even for a green zone, you had to have a certain uh, NPNT software. Then you go to our website, log in, take a permission and fly. Now, 70% of the drone operations will be in the green zones. That's our assumption. And in the green zones, which is up to 400 feet, most drones typically fly at 50, 100 feet up to 400 feet is being completely deregulated by the government. So you don't need any permission in the green. So Nayantara, if you have a, a, a weekend resort uh, outside the city, just go fly, share pictures on social media, and we'll click a like. You don't need any more permission. Nayan? So even for civilian use and all of that, no permissions that are going to be needed, like you said, you know, photographs of social media, etc. And yes, yes, and yes. Now, as someone who has skin in the game and has money on the table riding on drones with sky as the limit, as long as not in the uh, red zone. Ankit, let me come to you. Are you already started seeing a lot of these changes in your business? And what is it doing for startups like yours, companies like yours? Are you revving up investments? Are you looking at new areas? So, uh, you know, I will probably take us back about a year back when actually the drone revolution began, when the pandemic began and we all realized that you need to actually have drones do the activity of monitoring those confinement zones, make sure that, you know, we can probably enable deliveries which are contact free because there was so much misinformation or information about what spreads it, what does not spread it. So that's how, you know, it started and then government announced the Swamitwa scheme, which is again a landmark scheme where we are looking to map all the 660,000 villages in the country using drones. Then we had trouble at our borders and then we also had the famous war that uh, Azerbaijan won over Armenia because of the power of drones. When such things happen, uh, a technology which was languishing around as a good to have technology and really, you know, uh, my neighbor needs it, I don't need it kind of technology has moved from a good to have to a must have. And in that environment, when uh, the new rules at the beginning of the year came, I think everybody realized that something has gone amiss and the government has acted very fast and has changed the rules. Now, in terms of operationalizing, the government had already started giving exemptions to a lot of operations. We had exemptions for police operations for, uh, for the lockdowns. We had exemptions for Swamitva, we had exemptions for locust, we had exemptions for spraying. So a lot of exemptions that started coming in. So the industry, I would say, has started to take off since last year. And the rules are finally, you can say, the last nail in the coffin for actually making it 
less uh, stressful both on the government and on the entrepreneurs to operate in those green zones in areas which are far enough away to not be a big bother about safety and uh, also of security of the country so i think uh, definitely this is in continuation to what we were seeing offline it has now come online in that one sense and is now uh, formal as far as the country is concerned so i see these rules as a reflection of that uh, of what was happening since last a year or so and i think that from now on the investments in the space will go up significantly because the rules are uh, so simple they've opened up such a large area in the country and we'll see how large in the end it ends up being when the maps get released but the expectation as that uh, given the description it's going to be fairly large and that is what is going to drive uh, everyone to look at consumption in india for this technology as well as of course with the pli scheme coming in you are looking at making sure that you can produce here there is more incentive to produce here as well and that incentive is what's going to get components as well as drone manufacturers probably to come and build for not just the use cases in india but for the rest of the world as well so that's i think the spirit with which uh, we are going to take it and we are expecting that the market is going to react in this fashion in fact just the draft rules announcement and some of the other announcement that happened in parallel right. we've seen uh, investments at the early stage happen in this industry over the last few months as well correct i take your point and now we know the next day to watch out for is uh, exactly a week from now friday september 24th we are running out of time but something else amber dubey i would like to ask you uh, you know the press release had also spoken about having a um, cargo a cargo corridor for drones and drone deliveries can you tell us a bit about that what exactly is that and how is it going to work Good question. Uh, so, uh, what is going to happen is that you know, see, we already have uh, these uh, uh, beyond visual line of sight, as we call them, BVLOS, beyond visual line of sight. That's the future because you know, see, the, just doing it within a, a, a visual range of uh, 100, 200, or 500 meters uh, is not going to really use the potential of the drones. We need it for cargo deliveries, especially uh, in our remote and uh, mountainous regions, uh, far to reach, where uh, uh, getting a COVID vaccine or a blood sample. Uh, uh, across the hill might uh, uh, take just about 15 20 minutes uh, by a drone but uh, may take uh, several hours to to get there and this could actually save life and an entire family uh, can be uh, uh, saved from devastation just because the medicine didn't reach on time so on medical deliveries uh, we see a huge uh, potential uh, number 2 is the post harvest uh, transportation of goods so uh, post harvest we see almost 35 to 40% uh, i'm told uh, of uh, food produced gets wasted Uh, because uh, they can't reach the regional center especially in the uttarakhand uh, hill areas like jammu kashmir uttarakhand himachal uh, northeastern states etc again that's another place where these heavy drones uh, now we are talking about heavy drones the drones that we typically see on uh, on on our screens are typically those 2 kg 5 kg 10 kg we are talking now of 100 200 and 300 kg and if you notice in the drone rules uh, we have actually increased the the uh, the application of the rules from 300 kilos to 500 kilos this also includes drone taxis which will actually take human beings one day and this 500 can easily become 1000 or 2000 as we get as the regulator gets more and more confidence about the safe movement of these uh, ones now you can come to the drone corridor so the bv loss experiments we had selected 20 consortia and in addition to the consortia we are also encouraging uh, icmr for covid uh, uh, vaccine transportation for uh, telangana government had approached us and we are working very closely with them and uh, they have also collaborators from world economic forum niti aayog etc so we are all working towards these long distance uh, uh, transportation 10 20 or 30 kilometers inshallah one day it should go to 100 kilometers also now when these drones move here uh, let's not uh, forget that in the same airspace there are also helicopters there are military uh, aircraft low flying military aircraft some of those are not known uh, in advance okay and then there are also manned flights the regular indigo air india spice jet kind of flights now all these will get cluttered in the skies and uh, they need to be just like you have roads you can't just take your car on any road or any side of the road not stop at red lights so just like if i take the simile of a road and red lights and zebra lines and lanes in a road we'll have to just like an indigo plane when it indigo plane moves from delhi to mumbai it moves in corridors there are clearly defined corridors and you can't uh, bypass that so the same thing will have to be done in case of uh, unmanned uh, aircraft like drones also then So that's the future of the drone corridors that for delivery and how they're going to pan out to be as you can see the clear focus right now is going to be on the remote areas whether it is to do with uh, 
you know, infrastructure development, agriculture, of course, precision agriculture, uh, to use Amr Dubey's phrase, it can be a magic over there. Uh, we're completely out of time. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And here's an open invitation to be back here exactly a week from now on September 24th, uh, once we see the rules operationalized and that uh, revolutionary sky map. Thank you. And with that, it's a wrap.